I wanted to play the part of Seth. I was like, I should play that part, but then Judd said I was too old. How uh, frustrated were you at that moment? It's the late 1990s, and you want to make a funny movie with your best friend. <laughs> I just felt like you guys were stupid. Well, first got to write a script. We just had a lot in common, and so we started hanging out, and we started trying to write super bad, like when we were like 13. Like, very quickly, we decided to try to write a movie together. This is one of the best-known production stories in Hollywood. Seth Rogen, the man now best known for his trademark laugh, (laughs) and his best friend Evan Goldberg started writing a script at the start of high school. At first, it was just almost like scenes of things that had happened to us slash just, it's almost like was like high school sketches. Zoning out in Spanish class, sitting in the cafeteria, making fun of the other kids, like. What, so I gotta sit here and eat dessert alone like I'm fucking Steven Glansberg? Things that we did. And as we now know, this script turned into super Bad, the smash hit high school comedy featuring Seth, Evan, and their idiotic friend Fogel. If you're not in this class, leave this class. Fogel! Hi! It was raunchy, it was rude, it was stupid. I gotta catch a glimpse of these warlocks. But it was real. Almost every character is based on a real person, so there is a real Fogel, and when he was around 13 or 14, he acted exactly like the character in the movie. Oh, she got, she got, yeah. And this realness made Superbad endlessly funny to multiple generations of high schoolers because it was so relatable. Even if the jokes were offensive and it was super sexualized, that was the whole point. High school kids don't think before they speak, they do make decisions based on their hormones. And unlike other R-rated comedies of the time, like American Pie, Superbad presented teenagers as awkward, puberty-ridden disasters. And that's exactly what they were going for. We didn't see a lot of relatable material in movies. Movies, you know, and we knew we wanted, we, me and, I mean, we cursed all the time in high school and just talked about the most disgusting, filthy things in public areas very loudly. And this is Superbad's secret source. You guys in MySpace or? Real life is often so much more ridiculous and funny than anything a comedy writer can come up with, so Rogan and Goldberg figured, why not just dramatize that? Once we stole a keg, and so we had to like crack it open and because we didn't have the pump, and so we would pour the beer and we stored it in all these weird containers and we kept it in like detergent jugs. And... It's detergent! Yeah, what are you doing with it? And one time we went to a party at one of their houses and they all started doing coke and we wound up in a room with these guys who were very threatening towards us. It was a lot like the scene in the movie. Who's this guy? Hey, fellas. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Hey, everyone. Who are you? I'm nobody. No, 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 no. The period blood also happened. We were at a high school dance and um, we were in the locker room afterwards and it it essentially played out almost exactly like how it does in the movie. Are you dancing with some chick in there? Yeah, so? You can't think of that. (laughs) That has to happen. So they had a funny script, but in true Hollywood style, it took over 10 years and a little help from an old friend to get it made. Well, what's great about this movie is that Seth and Evan started working on it when they were like 13 years old. I think they actually had it drafted 15. That's the voice of Judd Apatow, one of the most influential comedy minds, directors, writers, producers of the 2000s. And luckily for Rogan, he makes an effort to remember his young stars. Seth Rogan, of course, you worked with uh, Freaks and Geeks. I did. How old was he at the time? Uh, He was uh, 16 years old when I met him. Apatow met Rogan on the set of Freaks and Geeks, another highly acclaimed high school comedy series in 1999, and similar to co-stars James Franco, Jason Segel, and Linda Cardellini, launched him to superstardom. But now you've been with him a long time. It feels like you've uh, you've followed him, uh, you've taken him through this important part of his career. And important is a huge understatement. In June of 2007, Apatow's Knocked Up came out, proving Rogan could lead a comedy. You smoke weed? Not really. You don't? No. At all? Mm-mm. Like in the morning? Only two months later, Superbad came out showing he could write a comedy. Nick Levin! Nice! And less than a year after that, Pineapple Express came out showing he could do both. How can I explain this to you differently? The battery is dead. In less than a year, Rogan became a household name, and a lot of this can be traced back to Apatow. <laughs> well, so the first time uh, I read the script was when we were uh, doing Undeclared, and we we did a table read and read it with Jason Siegel and Seth reading uh, the leads, and uh, it went it went well. There was uh, not a lot of uh, heart at no. that period. <laughs> at Apatow's request, the script was rewritten, and the heart finally arrived in the form of Evan and Seth's relationship, and the fear of losing your childhood best friend. I'm not... Even embarrassed to say, I just, I, I love you. So the script was finished, Apatow finally had the juice to get the movie greenlit, and they found the perfect director. I remember yeah, Seth, Seth, Seth called I me and told down. me. I was like, we got a director. I didn't even and know who you were. No one wants who? to make the movie, but we got a director. <laughs> yeah. Lo and behold, 
if you hire Greg Matola, uh, your filthy movie actually also becomes a good movie. But there was still a problem. Originally, I was going to play Seth, and we would hire another actor to play Evan. But it basically, it basically took us so long to get the movie made that I, like, aged out of the role, essentially. And, like, we were, like, 24 by the time we were making the movie, and I could not play uh, 18-year-old uh, convincingly anymore. So Rogan played one of the irresponsible police officers instead. Hell yeah, we should get some real beers. I have 13 beers to go. Please. And they went hunting for another Seth. And I was thinking, you know, the movie's green lit. They will let us hire the wrong guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and wow. this is the first one we can really screw up because wow. we have a green light and haven't found the guy. And I think at, at that exact moment, uh, Jonah just walked by on the set. No, exactly. He kept on trying to convince us to put him in super bad, and we were just like, no, like you're too old. Do you have any bigger clothes or do you only shop at Baby Gap? And we thought he was too old. And then we, ha I remember literally one day we like had him come to like into my trailer during Knocked Up and like filmed him on like a camcorder. And he recorded the scene, it was hilarious. And of course we all said, how come we didn't think of that from day one? I just think that I don't ever need to cook tiramisu. When am I gonna need to cook tiramisu? Am I gonna be a chef? No. This is what Judd Apatow has been doing for 20 years, spotting young talent just before they explode and putting them with other future superstars. McLovin? What kind of a stupid name is that, Fogel? What are you trying to be, an Irish R&B singer? His movies are kind of like the Avengers for comedy. It's about everybody getting a fair share, and like, it's just, it's like being like on an all-star team. Of course, it helps when you can bring Bill Hader off the bench as the sixth lead in your movie. Yeah, Bill Hader's insanely funny. Well, what are we gonna do? <laughs> but there was also a crazy debut performance by a future Oscar winner. This is my first movie, so I've never really done anything like this, much less with all the improv we get to do and all the, uh, tangents that everybody goes on. What the? An iconic team performance. We were like to the point of anxiety attacks and nervous breakdowns when it came to Fogel. We just could not find a Fogel. Yeah. And he walked in, walked out, and we we're just like hugging each other. Yeah. Wait, are you guys still picking me up from work? Can you answer me? And another actor who was about to go supersonic. And it's funny because Michael Sarah's really not like the actual Evan in real life, but but he was perfect, and I he he he's just a genius. And take off your vest. You look like Aladdin. <laughs> when we rehearsed for Knocked Up, we all watched Michael's tape, and yeah. we were like, "That's the funniest guy ever." I remember thinking, like, "If you guys don't cast that guy, you're stupid." Calm down, Greg. It's soccer. It's soccer. In the script, it was kind of like a straight man and a funny guy, but he made the straight man just as funny as the funny guy. Superbad was released August 17, 2007, and then a little movie called Juno came out only two weeks later. Like I'd marry you, you'd be the meanest wife ever, okay? And Already known for his character on Arrested Development, Michael Cera was suddenly an A-lister. And to be honest, this is the underrated legacy of Superbad. It'll live on as a generational high school comedy and rewatchable classic, so the movie itself is really fun. But it also showed what you could do, what was possible if a production company trusted some original talent and they nailed the casting. Rogan became massive, Hater went on to bigger and better things, Emma Stone won an Oscar, Jonah Hill trans transformed into a serious dramatic actor. And it all stemmed from that time Hollywood gave two best friends a chance to make a stupid comedy. Superbad was a great experience because these people were making something that really was exactly in their style and it was so epic to just watch. These eyes have seen a lot of love but they're never gonna see another one like I have with you. So we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. 